Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. This is the last lecture in the WAN section, and it's going to be just a short lecture on the WAN topology options. Now, for this, just imagine that all of your connections are point-to-point -point leased lines, and we're just thinking about our WAN connections between our offices here. Don't think about internet connections or VPN connections, because it will just get confusing if you do that. But you're going to get questions probably on this in the CCNA exam. Easy way to answer them is if you just think of point-to-point -point least lines between offices. So the first of our topology options is a hub and spoke, which is also known as a star. You see in the example here that New York is our hub site. Our spoke sites are Los Angeles, New Orleans, and Boston. So probably New York is the headquarters, and the other offices are the branch. All of the branch offices connect into the head office, which is the hub. So if Los Angeles wants to send traffic to Boston, that traffic will have to go via New York. We don't have a direct connection between Los Angeles and Boston or New York, between any of the branch offices. The advantages of using a hub and spoke topology is it's simple and you get simplified centralized security policy because all of the traffic going between your branches goes through New York. You can secure it in that central location in New York. Disadvantages are there's a single point of failure here. If we lose New York, we've lost connectivity between all of our different offices. Also, it's suboptimal traffic flow. Traffic from the branches to another branch is not going directly there. It's having to go through the hub site. That's going to add some delay. The next option we can use is a redundant hub and spoke where we put in an extra hub. So in the example, it's the same as before, but now we've also got a hub site in Washington as well. And all of the branches are connected to both New York and Washington as well. That second hub could be in a different city or it could be in the same city, even the same location as the main hub. Advantages of this are pretty obvious. The main one, it removes that single point of failure. If we, re if we lose New York, all of the offices can still talk to each other via Washington. Again, we have that centralized security policy for traffic between all of the offices. It's going to be secured in New York and Washington. Disadvantages, obviously the cost is going to go up. We've just doubled the amount of links that we've got here, and it's still suboptimal traffic flow because traffic between branches is still going via the hub site. The next topology option we have is a full mesh. This is where we connect every office to every other office. The advantage is that we get the optimal traffic flow. Traffic is taking the direct path. Disadvantage is that it's higher complexity and it's going to be higher cost as well because we've got so many more links now. The last topology that we've got is a partial mesh which is a trade-off between the other options. So here we've got New York, which is acting as a hub site, and we've got our branches in Los Angeles, New Orleans, and Boston. But here, Los Angeles and New Orleans have also got a direct connection between them as well. So this is going to be a bit higher cost than a pure hub and spoke, but we're going to get some of the advantages of more direct connectivity between some of our branches by doing this. Okay, so those were the topology options for WAN connections between offices. The last thing that I want to speak about here is a related topic, which is internet redundancy options. So in the offices for a company, they're going to want to have internet connectivity there. The first option is single home. And you can see here that the customer router 
is connected to a service provider router with a single link. So that is a single homed connection. Hopefully you can see the obvious potential issue there, which is the single points of failure. If either router fails or if the link fails, then the customer is going to lose internet connectivity in that site. So for redundancy, the customer may want to use dual homed instead. And you can see that what they've done is double up on everything here. So there's two customer routers connected to two service provider routers over separate links. So if any router or link fails, the customer will still retain the internet connectivity. Now, it looks like there's no single points of failure here, but there actually is one because what if the service provider has some kind of internal issue and they lose their internet connectivity? Not very likely, I know, but it's not completely unheard of. So if a customer is worried about that, what they can do is use multi-homed. And at first glance, this looks the same, but you see that now the customer is connected to two different service providers. So they've got a connection to service provider one and a connection to service provider two, and now there's no single points of failure. And the last option that the customer has is dual multi-homed, which again, they're connected to two different service providers, but their routers have got multiple connections to the different service providers. This might seem a little bit paranoid, but this does give you the highest level of redundancy for your internet connections. Okay, that is it for the WAN section. See you in the next section. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.